Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we are continuing the 100 Dragon Challenge. So I know I'm late on this one by like a week, but God, like it just did happen last week, guys, but I am glad that I waited because this guy took a long time. But today we are doing the Koi Fish Dragon. I've seen this one pop up a lot and I absolutely love Koi Fish. So I know that I wanted to do this like as soon as I saw the first comment. So today we're gonna finally jump in and draw this dragon. So I've actually seen this pretty commonly uh, along around the internet because I mean, it, it is a traditional like design in uh, like Japanese tattoos and other things of having um, a koi fish body and a dragon head, or at least if, if it's not traditional, I've seen it a lot. Um, and I know it is a common thing to have in that sense. And then it's been adapted by so many different artists of making like these interesting, cool dragon fish. And I wanted to really take a stab at it and try it in my own like little way. So I avoided looking at any recent pictures on the internet uh, that were koi fish dragons because I just did not want to be too influenced. Like I already knew I probably had some subconscious influences just because you know, koi fish dragons are pretty popular. Um, and so I just really tuned that out. The most I looked at were a couple of like the tattoos and like tattoo stylings and then pictures of koi fish. And I thought that was enough to get me started and figuring out what direction I wanted to go. So for this one, I went with kind of an Asian inspired dragon body and such. I was thinking about making this look like a long Asian lung that is maybe more water based and has some more aquatic dragon features as well. So I tried that out with the head shape first because I love the whiskers on the uh, Asian lung dragons. And then, God, I'm trying to remember if the koi fish also have whiskers. I think they have smaller ones. God, you would think I would know this by now. Um, when I was growing up, my parents had a small pond in their backyard for a little while and we had a bunch of different koi fish in there and I absolutely loved having them. We had like a big white one with some orange spots. We also had a really large orange one and uh, had some butterfly koi. We had so many cool ones. We, it, It's a little hard to keep koi in Arizona because there's the risk of them getting sunburn and such, which we found out was a thing. Um, and yeah, we just, we had a lot of different fish come and go, but it was amazing having them and they're really beautiful creatures. Like it was so nice to just sit out on a cool Arizona, maybe fall, winter day and just see them swimming around. Uh, I loved it and I, I really love koi fish. They're a little bit too much for me to take care of right now. Maybe one day in the future, I'd love to have some. Um, I don't know if I want to dive into taking care of fish again. I had a fish tank for a long time, but I always find them really fascinating and they're really pretty to look at. So usually if there's a pond somewhere or like if there's any type of koi fish nearby, I always like to go stare at them for a little bit because they're just, they're really cool fish and I love the pretty colors and such. So the final body design I did for my sketch, I kind of did a combination of a normal koi fish and a uh, butterfly koi fish in terms of how its fins are constructed and a couple of the different extra flair and pizzazz on its body. And so for this one, I wanted it to fill up most of the page because I just wanted to have this really big, long, awesome looking dragon. So I tried to do a lot of weaves and turns throughout the whole page and try to get this dragon to take up as much room as I could on the page. But that's also really hard on a, what I think this is like a nine by 12 piece of paper. I don't remember what the exact measurements are, but it's not like, it's not a huge piece of paper. And I knew that I wanted to put quite a few little details on here. So I had to keep that in mind too, even though I was filling up a good chunk of the page. But I really liked doing such a big twisting, turning, coiling dragon. And it was just really fun trying to plan out how to fit all the details. And I decided to also do like a head on uh, top down view of the face and it's just looking really intensely at the viewer. And I just really loved the expression it had. So then after I got the rough sketch nailed in, it was time to go in and do the line art. So I kept the rough sketch pretty loose. I didn't put in any of the major detailing I wanted to do just because I'm like, that's gonna be kind of doubly up on work. I already have a lot uh, to do in terms of line art with this one. So I decided just to kind of leave some of the uh, detailing 
for later when I was just gonna do the line art. For example, all the scales or any of the extra patterning on the fins or even adding extra fins that weren't fully rendered or put on the sketch. That's kind of what I waited for for this line art phase. And like I said, I wanted to add a lot of detail to this guy and a lot of different fins and scales and just make this look like a really majestic, maybe older, wiser koi fish dragon. And I had so much fun just getting lost in the line art. And it's even better later on when I start to do all the little scales. The scales, I, I think I set it in the pangolin dragon as well, but it's just so nice to just get lost in the repeat pattern. And I just realized I like doubled up on like killing myself with the dragons uh, in the past two weeks. We had the pangolin dragon, actually it's been three weeks. We had the peacock dragon, which was super detailed. And then we had the pangolin dragon, which was super detailed. And now we have the koi fish dragon that is also super detailed. I don't know why I did this to myself. I'm always like, oh yeah, I'm gonna just take it maybe a little bit easy this time. But now I just wanna keep like upping the ante every time and trying to make the best new dragon with every video, which is, it's not a bad problem to have, but when you have a full-time job and trying to get these videos done and cranked out, yeah, I, I guess I'll miss a couple and some deadlines will have to be pushed because, man, I, I just love how these dragons are looking and I, I don't like holding back from them and just being able to dive in and put as much detail and work into them as I want. Like, that's just what I really love doing with these. and. I guess we might just have to miss a couple deadlines, guys, because, man, I have been on the train of making super detailed dragons, and I don't see myself getting off super soon. And now that we are finally done with all of the scales, I went in and erased the rest of the pencil lines. And then I also wanted to add a little bit more perspective with the line art capabilities. Uh, so a tip that I've shared in the past is if you want something to pop out more or feel like it's in front of something, make the line art and line work around that shape thicker. So I wanted to go through and make sure that certain elements were obviously over other elements because with all those scales they can kind of get a little muddy on like what connects where and where things are lined up and what's over what so i just wanted to make sure that was a little more obvious in this piece and so now with the line art done it was time to jump in and get the colors so Koi fish come in so many different colors, but I really am attracted to kind of the more, I guess you could say traditional colors of the white, black, and orange combo. Um, I really like that one, or like, I guess you could even say the white and the orange is even a more traditional combo than that. Um, but I wanted to also incorporate some colors from other ones like uh, the yellows that are in a couple different koi fish. I thought would make a nice pop of another color, but I wanted this one to primarily be a white, orange and black koi fish. So I started by going in and blotching out where I wanted the big orange areas. And this was really fun. Like I was looking at a couple of different koi fish to kind of see how their patterning worked and like where the splotches ended up. And I know it, it's kind of up to chance and random to a certain extent, um, but I just wanted to make sure it looked, you know, similar to how koi fish patterning and blotches are. I don't know how to describe it, but there's a certain shape or look that they have to them. Even if it even if it seems random, there's a certain way to paint them to make it look natural. And I just wanted to make sure, well, I guess I'm using marker, not paint, but I just want to make sure that it, it looked like it could be the actual coloring on a koi fish. And then I really utilized like kind of pushing down harder on the marker to get the side of the pen, not just the top tip. And by using that, I was able to get similar uh, patterning like scales. Like as you can see here, I was doing like these bigger brush strokes of like pushing down and then letting the tip go to give that br like the 
the brushstroke a scale pattern and make it look like it's part of the scales and just different chunks of the coloring on it. And it was really fun trying to figure out where to put like bigger chunks of the, the black scales and the orange and just kind of transitioning between the two. I started developing um, a coloring pattern of going through and doing the oranges first and just doing all the oranges around the body and then going back in and adding the blacks because for a while I was kind of jumping back and forth between those colors and it made it a little bit uh, less efficient and took me a little bit longer. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go all in. We're gonna do all the orange and then we're gonna go back and then do all the black. And with that, it went so much faster and I don't know why I didn't do that from the beginning because I just lost some time like juggling between the two pens, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you do it like every couple brush strokes, it adds up. And then uh, it just helped me in my head block out the different areas. Oh, and I forgot to press record. As you can see here, I did have to skip ahead because the last little bit of coloring where I added the black, I totally forgot to press record and I missed it. I, I will fess up to that one. I was just not, <laughs> was not fully like cognitive after the long day of work. So I just totally spaced on that bit. And now with all the main colors done, I went in with a light gray marker and did some shading. And just to add a little bit more depth, depth? Wow, I can talk. Depth and dimension. I think I combined the two in my brain. So depth and dimension is now depth. <laughs> anyway, I went in with the grays to try to add some more shading and really push some of the body parts forward and back. And I think that added a really nice uh, layering, or not layering, dimension. Wow, you guys see, I'm just on a roll today. Anyway, it really wrapped up and finished up the piece, and I love how it looked in the end, and I cannot wait to see your guys' koi fish dragons. I think there's so many possibilities for this one, too. Uh, there's different types of koi fish, different coloring patterns, different looks, and then just, like, there's so many ways you can translate a fish to a dragon. I think it's going to look really cool and I can't wait to see what you guys make. So if you guys would like to enter your Koi Fish Dragon for a chance to be selected in next week's features, go ahead and post it on Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag KM100Dragons. And I know some of you have been asking for other ways to submit, but we're sticking with that for now. I'm looking into some other ways to submit for those who don't have Twitter or Instagram. But for now, let's look at last week's entries for the Pangolin Dragon. All right, so first up, Scorching Shadow. I really love like the lava-like look to the scales that you have on some of the Pangolin Dragon, along with kind of those bigger, um, I guess you could call them uh, claw things coming out of the back. I know there's probably a technical term for it that's escaping my brain right now, but I really love how you scaled this boy, and I love the lava and the lava on the tip of the tongue. Really nice. I love this one overall. And Dino Cat X 13 Arts, really like beautiful work, like lovely uh, colored pencil work. And I just really like this one overall. The big tusks are really nice. And I like what ear shape you picked. I know that's kind of a random thing to point out, but it's just super cute. And I love the design overall and the, the scales look really nice as well. And again, all of you guys did amazing. So many really cool pangolin dragons. I really enjoyed looking through them. You guys are all so talented. So if you guys would like to enter again, do the hashtag KM100Dragons on Twitter or Instagram for your chance to enter for the Koi Fish Dragon. Well, I mean, not your chance to enter, but to enter for your chance to be featured. Yep, still a little bit of dead brain. But anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And I can't wait to do the next dragon. I have an idea and I think you guys are gonna really like it. So tune in next week for another dragon. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye everybody.